They called us a terrorist cell. I thought we were an art collective. Though we started out as a therapy group. Just a bunch of broken, misfit toys trying to help patch each other up. We were also bitter back when we first met. Disappointed by the system, let down by our institutions and society as a whole. It felt like we'd been playing musical chairs our whole lives and had never once been given a place to sit down. So fuck it. If they wouldn't let us sit at the table, there was plenty of room on the floor. The floor. Think of it as a more basic, simple grasp of reality. That's what we told ourselves. That we were connecting up to some fundamental, primal truths. As we escalated from self-help books to strange, shadowy, occultist publications which promised eerie insights into the masses of conspiracies that were controlling our world. There were rumors of broken magics and of insect-minded overlords looking to control our species from afar. Hive minds seeking to infiltrate our place in the universe. Breeding their little thoughts inside our minds. It was little Chip who heard about the subspace portal made of dead cats deep in the sub-basement of the downtown welfare office. There was a lot of talk about what should be done. Destroy it? Tell our contacts in the mainstream media? Paint a big art installation about it? Sell the concept of the thing as a miniseries to Netflix? We argued for days, unable to come to a resolution, until Tandy put it on the table that we couldn't really decide what to do with or about the thing until we'd seen it. Tandy, the agender witch from Brooklyn, they'd been blind since birth, but what had brought them to us was their experience as a witness to the murder of their family by corrupt cops being worn as puppet skins by multi-phasic hunter worms from one of the higher stages of reality. Who else was there? Little Chip, a big Jamaican kid with a huge and elaborate knife collection and a laptop computer that hummed when he pet it. It was one of his online contacts who'd put us onto the portal. I asked if the contact could be trusted, and he just laughed that big laugh he laughs at me whenever I ask a question that has a dangerous answer. Little Chip looked to be about seven or eight feet tall, with a massive head of neatly woven dreadlocks tied back in a large jade clasp. He'd found us after getting stuck in a subway train that had lost half its passengers to an albino banana slug the size of the Chrysler building. Turkey Boy was a stocky young bald girl from Glasgow who'd lost her left hand shadow boxing with some sort of void of infinite space who'd been abducting kids in her neighborhood. The weird abyss had also absorbed her fear of the infinite, leaving Turkey Boy with a cool zen focus that tended to unnerve anybody she spent any time with, anybody but us. The cat was a super intelligent feline we'd rescued from an intelligence enhancement program being operated by the makers of a popular energy drink. The cat communicated with a series of yowls and yips and Doctor Who quotes, which got old really quick. The cat claimed to be able to see into alternate realities and to be on a mission to realign the sacred rites of a lost and forgotten deity from before the times of man. The cat had a destructive telekinetic gaze and once killed like a dozen cops in just under six seconds. Everybody liked the cat, but there was a healthy respect there as well, with just a hint of nightmarish fear. And then there was me, Anonymous Cubed, part-time private eye, occasional paramilitary ontologist. I was cursed with an overindulgent sense of first-person narration, an affliction I'd picked up when I'd been cursed by a beatnik's poetry manual back in the bookshop I used to work at. That was back in my old life. 
Back before my whole existence became this disjointed narrative that I wind up reciting in media res with moody music tucked in narrowly behind my voice. So what could we do? We took up arms and we headed into that malicious government building masquerading as a place of helpfulness. We kicked in a door in the den of night and just let the alarm ring out. The cats stayed in the alley to watch our backs and by the time we got out, they'd have doubled their last kill count and then doubled it again. I don't know what you call that. Quadding it? I doubt it, that's not a word. Anyway, it was a lot of dead bodies, but the cat didn't even care. The cat loves killing. That's what we love about them, as well as the healthy fear, which I'd mentioned earlier. Tandy set loose some sort of spell to put all the molecules in the building on our side, which rendered us basically tactilely invisible until we made our way down to the third sub-basement, some 80 feet below street level. That's where all the weird science gurus and mad military chiefs were scheming and plotting for ways to manipulate the fabric of reality with their new toy. The subspace portal was real, and it was active. The thing looked like a beehive made out of yowling tumors. There were things swarming in and out of it. They looked like bugs, but I don't think that's what they were. I'm not sure what they were. It was a biological doorway to another dimension. Some broken universe where the laws of physics had given way to the greed and corruption which are currently threatening our human society. There's nothing you can do in those sort of situations but burn the whole thing out from the foundations. Treat it like a cancer. That's what little Chip convinced us anyway. I wish I could have found a way to argue with him, but I knew better than that once I'd seen the thing. We took a deep breath, lit the fuse, and headed back out the way we'd come in. The fuse on the bomb, the bomb we'd brought. Turkey Boy built the thing, but it had also been blessed by some angry death god Tandy was friends with. And I think the whole thing was powered by one of the cat's devastatingly radioactive poops. Something went wrong on the way out, though, and we wound up tied into a conflict with some goons working security on the place. They had eyes like sharks, and mouths full of thousands of little insect mandibles where they should have had teeth and tongues. Little Chip took out a few of them with sweet martial arts moves and a blast of techno lightning from his souped-up laptop, and Turkey Girl and Tandy did their part as well, spreading paranoia and discontent amongst our opposition. I was really the weakest part of the team. I'd gotten too stoned to function competently because I thought it might be funny. That's how I wound up getting shot six times in the right shoulder, losing half a pound of meat and two-thirds of a pound of bone. But we escaped. That's what was important. Because two and a half seconds later the bomb went off, shattering the entire facility and everybody still in the facility into a small pile of highly toxic dust. It was a victory but not one we had time to celebrate. We never have time to celebrate. The cat had to go into his little carrying case, and little chips revealed that he'd broken one of his fingers when he'd been spin-kicking a guy to death, and Tandy really had to pee. But one thing was sure. Our enemies knew we were out there, and they knew that we might resurface at any time, and they knew that we were kind of disorganized and actually a little scared of them. So we weren't exactly haunting their dreams, but they also probably weren't looking forward to seeing us again. So, you know, it was half a victory, at least. Anyway, I'm Anonymous Cubed. Sometimes I work alone, and other times I team up with small cells of activists, and we attempt to do what we can to save the world. If you're hearing this message, it means we've done our jobs once again. <laughs> you're welcome.